Hello and welcome to the Arcade Saga. My name is Ilkian Wiersma, also known as EJ. Uh, yeah, welcome to this uh, care uh, video because I did get a uh, request from Mary G. Arcade's More 2058 and she uh, just briefly dis uh, discussed that her dendromiums are not all doing well in a semi hydroponic setup and she asked if I would give a care uh, guide about this dendrobium chrysanthemum orange which I just uh, showed in a, uh, my last video actually and I said yes of course uh, thank you for the request and I will do a uh, care video on it and I also will give some tips generally on dendrobiums and how I grow them how I uh, try to get them uh, rooted etc in a uh, semi hydroponic setup but before we're going to do that, I uh, am going to talk about this one. And yes, I have a bit of paper in my hand for some, some notes uh, about things that I would like to discuss and I think are kind of important for this video. So the first thing, uh, let's start with the light levels. So yeah, first uh, let's talk a little bit about the lights. Well, this is probably about south facing. It's, uh, it's about here, I think. So this would be getting into the west, southwest facing. So quite a lot of light over here. And then we go turning around even more. I don't want to try, you, to, try to make you dizzy, but here we are. Uh, look at that, there we are. So yeah, this is in the back of the uh, greenhouse. It's fairly near to the roof, as you can see. So it does get quite some light. And I think that makes that uh, uh, quotation marks uh, intermediate uh, light levels i think i have them there but it's like i said it's pushed all the way in the corner there that's this is the pot over here to be honest i thought it would suit this uh, arcade as well but I, I i really don't have a different spot for it because it has these incredibly long canes and this is actually a cakey over here <laughs> And all those canes are from this plant. So yeah, I, I had no idea where to put it and only over here. So I don't uh, bump into it constantly. <laughs> so yeah, and you see all my fells around it. It's on my fell wall. So it, they, uh, it does get uh, the similar light as the fells. But anyway, so that's a bit of uh, light. And you see there my LED lights. And yeah, just, that's just to keep it at uh, 12 hours a day, also in winter. So the lights are uh, on all day and that's for tw uh, 12 hours a day, like I said. Just to keep them, uh, because it likes to grow indoors. I didn't have the lights, but it kept on growing anyhow. But I now like to uh, get a little bit more light in here because on the dull days, like today, it will be very dark in this corner, too dark, I believe. So I like to help it a little bit. Uh, more on the light levels there and it looks like it's working because uh, all the plants in this corner keep on growing making spikes and uh, start to bloom beautifully talking about light uh, not my previous video but the one the before that my blooms buds and such episode 17 and i will link it in the end of this video i did discuss uh, the the light bulbs that i use the led lights so if you are interested in uh, knowing a bit more about those uh, you should watch that uh, video and probably uh, get some answers there. But yeah, anyhow, it's currently blooming and I thought, yeah, that's obviously the best time to do this video. It looks so beautiful and it will lose eventually the leaves. It's just uh, how this one is growing. You see some canes here that are leaves, uh, leafless already and those. But uh, yeah, when it's in bloom, most of the times it, it still has the leaves as well. And I love the green and the orange. The combination is so incredibly beautiful. It works so well together. And uh, yeah, it's this cane and it goes all the way up to here in this corner over there. The red pot, I, I think it does show up in the video, but it's all the way in that corner. So yeah, I did uh, measure one of the canes. Maybe it was this one or this one. I'm not, uh, I do not remember exactly which one, but they are all about the same length. And when I did measure that one, I came, um, it did measure 220 centimeters. So that's quite a long cane. Well, this is the same length or maybe even a bit longer. I don't know. I didn't measure it. And, uh, but anyhow, it's, it's, uh, it's growing very well for me. It's a very easy one to grow for, for me. Uh, it does do its thing. 
but I didn't grow it always in a greenhouse. So maybe you think, yeah, you have a greenhouse, better conditions. Well, generally speaking, yes, that is true. But the, the first longest cane, the one that did grew about 220 centimeters we just dis, uh, discussed, uh, it did grow in, in, indoors, in, inside of my living room. So um, I'm mentioning that just to let you know that it is doable to grow this one and get those long canes on even though you don't have a greenhouse. So that's one thing I uh, would like to mention as well. Plus, um, like I said, it's very easy. So let's start with an, uh, another topic, a very important one, I think, and that's uh, the feed, the feed levels. Well, if you know me, if you know my channel, you know that I don't feed much. Uh, I think if you compare me to the other growers uh, here on YouTube, I, 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 I probably have the lowest levels of feed for all my orchids. Uh, and that's how I grow. And I think uh, they, they do well and they don't need more feed. So in summer, it's around 80 up to 100 and sometimes 150, but most of the times it's 80 up to 100 parts per million. And that reminds me um, because it, it only says the amount of uh, fertilizer, but I, I use different fertilizer and I will include that video also on the end of this, uh, the link of that video and also on the end of this video. <laughs> and so you can check that out if you want to know which, which fertilizers and additives I uh, specifically uh, use. Um, so that's, yeah, it's not much. And in winter, we now are in, in, in uh, fall, so we're going ahead into winter. I will even um, slow it down, so to speak, on the fertilizer. I will go down to 30 or 40 parts per million. So uh, that's very, it's a very teeny tiny bit, especially for these uh, very giant orchids. You may think that a orchid like this needs a heck of a lot of feed. Uh, I thought that in the beginning as well, but I stopped doing it. Why did I do that? Well, first reason, if you, uh, whoops, I did was a fell lips. Uh, if you um, are growing in a semi hydroponic setup like I do, and you don't flush like I do, uh, and you, you, you have quite a lot of high levels of feed, let's, let's put it like that, you will uh, get the salt built up. And salt built up, they really, really hate. So that's for all dendrobiums and basically for all the plants. But I, I, I really see it uh, on my dendrobiums as well. If you have too much fertilizer in your pot and you get those white salt built up in your pot, yeah, that's, that's basically asking for troubles, uh, root burn, root loss, etc. So don't do it. You better can give them a little too less, especially in, in, uh, when you start growing them in a new setup and slowly build it up. And uh, it's basically for me, the feeding levels goes uh, uh, hand in hand with light as well. So if you don't have uh, the, the light that they like, so this one is, I think, uh, I would class it as an intermediate. It doesn't have very high light, even though, uh, like we just saw, it's very close to the roof. It doesn't have as much light as my Vendas or Cattleyas, but it's intermediate, so it does, does get quite a bit of, of light. If you have those two balance, the light levels and the feed levels, there, there, um, you should s see it on your plants. You see, it, and I like to measure my reservoir, so I see that the. Uh, uh, let's say I put in 80 parts of million uh, parts per million of fertilizer. I see it go down, down to 60 after a week or so. So if I measure the reservoir after a week, it's it's going down. So that means that the plant is obviously is eating the fertilizer. I don't know which fertilizer or additive, but it is eating because the parts per million go down. And uh, I noticed that they most of the times go not further down. So if I have 80 in it, well, it may go down to 50, sometimes 40 on, on occasion on some orchid here and there. But most of the times it's about 20% or 20 parts per million that it goes down. And those are on orchids that do very well for me. So like this one, this one obviously grows incredibly well. It blooms uh, very well, it has healthy leaves. So uh, that for me was a sign that they really don't need much feed, but they need 
uh, the feet, obviously, but not too much. And that's why I like the semi hydroponic setup because I have a reservoir. I always have feet around in the pot for the orchid to uptake. And it can, like I, uh, I mentioned before, I like to think of it of, uh, as a little buffet of little parts of feet in there. I'm not exactly sure which part this orchid needs right now, but I try to have it in the reservoir so, we, so it can take that part of fertilizer, if that, this does make sense. Um, and that's how I grow in general my orchids. So also this one, and it really works well for me. I, I think this is the best method so far. I, I really enjoy it and I have uh, good results overall. I have some bad ones, but that's, uh, I have 400 something, 430 plants, I think. So yeah, there are a few that are doing not so well, but the rest overall is doing well, as is this one. So I wanted to, uh, really, really uh, um, pointed out in this video that the lights and the feet are for me as a grower basically go hand in hand. If one is off, the other one is off as well. Because you don't want to feed an orchid that doesn't need the feed, that is not happy, that not isn't really want to grow or it doesn't have the light to grow. Uh, if that does make sense. So that's my uh, simple logic behind uh, these two. These two parts are very, very important. And keep it low. Just make sure it, the fertili fertilizer is there, but keep it low, if you ask me. So that is that. Um, well, yeah, it's, uh, uh, it's obviously blooming. So a bit of care about the blooming time. Sadly, sadly, the blooms are not that long lasting. That is something that uh, Tom, Tom Furby mentioned as well in, in the la on the last video. He has the, uh, this one as well, or maybe the yellow one, but he had, has a dendrobium chrysanthemum. And he already said it in that comment that it's, yeah, it's a little bit of a shame that it's not uh, long lasting. But once it blooms, it, I think it makes up for, uh, for that fact that it's not, uh, the blooms are not around that long, but it's very spectacular. And it has, very, especially on the brighter days, it has this beautiful honey scent. It really reminds me of honey. So the blooms have a beautiful fragrance. They are a little bit waxy. Uh, they do look a little bit waxy and they are not very large, but it has these clusters of blooms, which are, are pretty, uh, pretty awesome. And put them all together, you have this beautiful splash of orange with a hint of a dark red burgundy color. And once again, on that beautiful green background, yeah, it's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. So it, it, it blooms for me once uh, once a year for uh, about three weeks, uh, give or take. And yeah, normally it was when I did grow it inside of the home indoors, it was in about August and then it cha changed. It's now October. So uh, it's most of the times it's half, halfway October. It starts to bloom a little bit into November and why it does that, I don't know. It's just a little bit later. So I don't uh, force it into bloom. I just let it be and it may find its own time, the best time to bloom, whatever that may be for the plant. So yeah, that changed a little bit. I, uh, once again, I have no idea why that is. But it happens and it blooms, still blooms. The all other uh, funny thing is that once you start seeing the first signs of the buds on a cane, well at least this one, it also starts out a new shoot. And that brings me uh, to the next topic. And that is, when I bought this orchid, I did uh, look it up on the internet to, give, uh, to get a general care guide. And uh, I like to do that with my orchids and then I, most of the times I just forget it, but I like to have a bit of an idea where to put it inside the greenhouse, inside the orchid room. Does it need much light or a little less, etc. Uh, so I did that with this one and it said on the, it said on the internet, I don't know, don't know uh, the exact website anymore, but that this generally needs a winter rest and it needs, really needs a dry, a wet, dry cycle. Etc. Well, first of all, I have it in semi-hydroponic, semi so it's, it's wet all the time. Uh, and that's because it's adjusted to that, of course. And this one, like we just discussed, and I will show the new growth in a second, but um, that is something that I learned from Roger, from Roger Orchids, is that uh, you need to look at your plant. So, 
and they sort of tell you if they need a winter rest. Well, uh, this one is obviously also in growing mode because of the new cane. So yeah, that, that's, it's not even thinking about winter resting. And that is what this one always did. It always grew or start a new growth just before winter. And it did grow on through winter, through uh, spring, in summer, and eventually it, uh, in, in about fall, it did mature the cane and it starts blooming. And that's the cycle, it's, it keeps on doing it. So no, I don't give it a winter rest at all. You don't want to give your uh, plants that have new shoots winter rest, right? So uh, yeah, that's something that I uh, sort of disagree. I'm not saying that this one, uh, it, it has to do, of, of course, with your environment. So maybe on some places or some growers who watch this video have a, a, a dendrobium chrysanthemum that, that actually gets a winter rest. Could be, but this one uh, is happy and it uh, keeps on growing. So, uh, and maybe I have quite some blooms. Yeah, maybe if, yeah, if I would give it a winter rest, some say you get more blooms. Well, first of all, I just cannot give it a winter rest because then probably the new growth will die off or slow down. Yeah, I'm not completely sure if that is completely the truth. But anyhow, if your plant is happy, it will bloom, I think. So uh, most of the times, and uh, especially this one, it, doesn't count for every orchid, of course, but for this one, uh, w keep on growing it. If you if it does if, if it is happy and it wants to grow, uh, let it grow, and eventually you will have the blooms. I think that's uh, that's the most simple explanation about the the care, the winter rest, what to do. So yeah, that is about the care guide, I think, of uh, of this dendrobium. But yeah, you may know that I uh, do not change my water that often, so all my arcus do get uh, the same amount of fertilizer. I did discuss this in other videos, but if you want to know more about it, let me know. But I think you can uh, will find it on my uh, on my channel if you watch the videos. Uh, but I now want to like to go back to uh, what you said in your comment that uh, your dendrobiums, not all of them, really start to grow in a same hydroponic. Maybe I have some tips, maybe, who knows? Because I, I'm, I don't know your environment, I don't know what you already tried, and etc. But here are some tips. Well, the first thing that really changed my uh, success with get him, getting my plants adapted, and not only the dendrobiums, but all of them, is when I uh, did get the um, adapt, uh, adaptation period better. Because when I started, I thought, well, they need a reservoir, they need to adjust. So I just give them the reservoir right after a repot coming out of bark or sphagnum moss, just into uh, inorganic media. Back in the days, it was LECA. Nowadays, it's pumice. But and I just started to give them a, a reservoir. That's not very handy to do, if you ask me. That is not very handy. I'm currently working on a one short video where I show uh, six steps that I basically take to get a plant adapted. That will be upcoming weeks. It's not completely finished because the plants are not completely adapted yet. But it's coming, so that might be uh, very useful. But basically what I changed was I did do my repot. I did put them in, uh, in this, uh, nowadays in pumice. And I just flushed them with RO water and a little bit of seaweed or kelp. And basically what I'm doing is I'm sort of mimic the wet and dry cycle. So I let them dry up a little bit and then I water them again in three, four days, some, sometimes five or six days. Depends on the weather, of course. But if they really start to dry up, I give them another flush. And I keep on doing that until I see new roots growing are old roots shooting out, starting to branch inside of the pot. So I if I see those fresh uh, new green uh, root tips again, then I will fill up the reservoir and I will fill it up also with RO water and seaweed and for the next coming two to three weeks. And then I might start to think about starting to fertilize the orchid again. But just you really want to slow down on the fertilizer. And my fans are going on just a minute. And there I am again. So yeah, it's a little bit of noise. I have the one in the background. Maybe you hear it, but I like to have the air movement, movement going on. Um, but uh, yeah, so that was a big change. You, 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 yeah, you need those plants into a, 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 a keep saying, uh, a growing mode. 
they need to get into a growing cycle again, starting to uh, make new canes, new leaves, but es especially new roots. Not always the new canes, but you need the roots because those roots will adapt into the wet uh, setup you basically have them in. So you will get the water roots, so to speak. So that's a big, big tip. The biggest tip and the best tip I can give, I think. But well, at least it was for me. The second one is, and we will have a close-up now because, <laughs> funny enough, this one I still have in Lekka because I didn't repot it because it doesn't need it. And well, yeah, actually, to be honest, I don't uh, look forward uh, to repotting this one because it's such a giant. And luckily, that's the beauty of inorganic media. If it's growing well, you don't have to repot it at all. You can just leave it in because the media is not going down or anything. So this one is in that pot for years and years and years. And I am uh, planning on le <laughs> leaving it in that pot for years and years because it's so big. But anyhow, funny enough, this one is still uh, potted up in, uh, in Lekka. But I found with quite a lot of different orchids as well, but especially also with my dendrobiums that generally speaking, they really don't like the Lekka. Uh, especially the top layer. There is something about Lekka I personally do not like it as well. So I that will be uh, some from s also some influences on how I look at it. But I just, if I have it in my hands, it just doesn't feel right. I don't like the feel of the Lekka. And it feels always a little bit salty, like there's something on it all the time. And even though I washed it and I washed it and I flushed it and I washed it, like the other growers do as well, and it, they do a perfect job with a Lekka. It's just my prefer personal preference. But it is something if your orchids struggle to adapt and you lose, uh, you use yeka, uh, leka, <laughs> okay, all the words, you use leka and your plants are, are struggling, that might be a case uh, that it really doesn't like the leka. Some of uh, the dro drobians, especially Fenleopsis, did do well uh, in a leka. Some. But if I use pumice, they always do fine, unless something else is off. And that is why, why I, I love pumice. It also feels so much different. And it is inorganic, but it is sort of, kind of, an uh, organic media. That sounds silly, I know, but what I mean by that is that it's, it's found in nature as well. Uh, it's almost like lava rock. And if I'm correct, lava rock is uh, a hot lava that, that cool down on the ground where the pumice is uh, pieces of leka with gases coming out and it did dry up in the air and therefore it's a little bit lightweighter than the actual uh, uh, lava rocks but it is, is very similar to the lava rock but it's uh, it's obviously called pumice and like i said it's a little bit lightweighter so uh, that is uh, something that i like as well the leka has to go through a lot of different processes to get it nice and round and, and uh, it needs to be baked I believe and yes it can work but I, 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 I don't like the feel of it I'm sorry I tried and and it's just not my media uh, so I uh, did, did move over to pumice uh, completely with an exception of the uh, Cintiq but the Cintiq I don't use on the dendrobiums you could use but I don't think you need it but anyhow, that's that's something to uh, have a have a look at as well. If you if you use lekka, I'm not saying you need to repot them and need to start pumice for all of your plants. What I'm trying to say, if you can get your hands on some pumice, and it's not that expensive in my country, it's not expensive at all. So it's way cheaper as lekka as well, which is a big benefit. But anyhow, just try a few and see how it how it goes, because if they start out push out new roots, I've found that the lekka quite often does uh, let those roots, the tips burn. So you get this uh, black spot and st roots star stop growing, where the pumice is, is not doing anything to the new roots. So, uh, and also the pebbles on top I have, they are work great. They work great with the, uh, with the setup. Just how it works for me, just to put it out there. So that's, uh, that's a, um, a tip as well and the last one for now let me know if that if this uh, did answer all your questions and uh, of course other viewers i'm talking to all of you guys please let me know if you have questions 
or you may want to uh, share your uh, experience with them, please uh, leave that in the comment section as, as well. That would be perfect. But um, my, especially my dendrobium family opsis, uh, do not, not really like my winters, even though I don't get, uh, it doesn't get colder than 80 degrees in my greenhouse, which is about 64 Fahrenheit. But um, they still do not really like it. And that's because I think uh, they uh, do not really like the water. And the water, uh, most of the times, especially in winter, it does get a bit cooler than the 18 degrees. It can go to 15 uh, sometimes, or 60, 15. And they really don't like that. So maybe if you want to try something, you may want a, a heat mat. Uh, underneath the pots just to keep the reservoir at a nice temperature and I would uh, get it at 19 or 20 degrees so you have a bit of differentiation there during the day and at night I think that is beneficial for them as well uh, so uh, let's say uh, during the day you will have it up to 25 during the winter and maybe even warmer during summer and then it goes down to 20 I think that would be perfect for them but yeah, so that's something uh, I have to deal with as well. So you may wonder, how do you deal with it? Well, I don't do much. I don't do heat mats because I have too many of them. So I leave them be and I see that in most cases that they, the, the roots that were in the reservoir die off. But the part that wasn't in the reservoir stays and it will shoot out again in, uh, in spring most of the times. So they, they do survive and I have beautiful spikes on them. So. I think they are doing okay but that was something that i could um, improve on but i don't want to do it because like i said i have too many so i'm not gonna struggle with that this is what they get they need to deal with it and they do uh, do a, a pretty good job but in general speaking they those dendrobiums like it a little bit warmer i think yeah i think that is the most of the things most of the tips that uh, did uh, pop in mind. Like I said, if you have still have questions, please let me know. I really enjoy these uh, videos because I know what you would like to hear and like to see on my channel. So uh, keep them uh, coming. Thank you so much for now. And uh, if you didn't already, you may want to subscribe to my channel, give it a thumbs up. That really would help my, uh, my channel grow even more. So that would be, uh, would be beautiful as well, uh, of course. So, and uh, for now, I really hope to see you at one of my next uh, videos. Bye-bye.